Hey, uh, well, Coach, hope you're doing well. Obviously, you guys recently brought in Texas transfer Dylan Mitchell. You released a statement on him, but if you just wanted to go, more expansive thoughts about what was so attractive about bringing him into your program. Well, you know, a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory, right? He's just a terrific, terrific young player. Um, I think sometimes with guys, you know, you, you got to stand up here and you got to explain what you've seen. And Dylan's different because he's already done it at a really high level. He's had significant roles for two NCAA tournament teams, one team that made a deep run his freshman year. Uh, I think they won the Big 12 conference tournament his freshman year. I mean, he's he was a McDonald's All-American. Um, I think a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory, but he's so versatile. Uh, on both ends. Like, he can do so many things, guard so many different positions. I think he really fits our style of play, the things that we value. And I think it's a really really cool situation because, you know, the the summer, like getting him here now so we can start our work next week, if he can just take a couple more steps and have a great summer, I mean, he's already a really good player, I think. I think there's a lot of room there to grow, and this will be a big summer and off-season for him. And I think, you know, this will be a good environment for him to do that. Coach, looking back this past season, you've had some time to kind of reflect on it. Uh, what were your biggest takeaways on year one in the Big 12, and how does that help with the preparation this summer? Yeah, um, it's been – there hasn't been – as you guys now know with college basketball, it's not like the season ends in the old days and you spend a couple of weeks reflecting and, you know, putting thoughts, notes together, meeting, having player development meetings. Like, it's very different now. I mean, the season ends and, honestly, a, a whole new season starts with different kinds of demands. So, really, until the last week, things hadn't really slowed down for our staff. And I think a lot of people across college basketball would say that. But over the last week – I've uh, been fortunate to do a ton of planning. You know, we, it's like probably the first time in, in three years uh, that I've had more than a couple days to plan for our summer program. You know, usually you get to the weekend before you start and you're just scrambling the last couple of years, which has been uncomfortable. But, you know, I've had a, you know, a good week now. I'll be spending the rest of this week, you know, planning and preparing our staff. And our guys will get in Sunday and we'll get to work. So that should help. But... There's so many things to take away. I, th I think the thing that is, is obvious, but something that sticks in our heads every day is how many close games we lost. You know, that the margin of error was so small. So what what can we do, you know, from, from here moving forward to try to close that gap? And if, if so many of the games in our league are coming down to one or two possessions, what can we do to try to separate to win one more? Be what, what can we do today to be one possession better? You know, and I think if we were three possessions better, if I got to choose the right three possessions, and there's a lot of ifs, you know, we feel totally different about our year last year. So um, I think that that's the thing that sticks out the most is just how small the the margins are. And, and we have to do everything in our power to, to close the gap on those margins or separate from those margins with all of our work this off season. With change being super constant in college basketball, like, um, speak on how versatile this new roster is and have you thought about, like, how, you know, you got people that can play anywhere from the two to the four. Um, how excited are you about that as well? Yeah, I'm really proud. Um, I'm really proud of the job that our staff did. You know, not – you know, we, it's always fun to talk about the new faces first, but to – you know, to, for us, like, to retain – the guys that we did. It was a priority to retain these guys. Um, I'm, I'm really proud. Like the, those, all the guys that came back, they're, from day one, it was, I want to be back at Cincinnati. You know, uh, certainly there's conversations and, and the whole dynamic of retention's changed a lot in the last couple of years across college basketball. But from day one, those guys were very clear. Like, I want to be here. I love what we're doing. I love going to school here. I love this community. Um, and so, to me, I'm really proud of the retention first. And then I thought we did a really nice job of adding 
not just good players, but the right players and the right pieces around that kind of nucleus that we retained. So as you look at our our roster in totality, and again, I mean, Dylan's commitment's recent, right? So that was kind of the last piece. I mean, you look in the totality of the roster for the first time, that versatility, number, number one, just, man, the length is something I've talked about since I got here. You, we want to have great length and great athleticism. And you look across the board now, and there's a ton of length and athleticism. You mentioned the word versatile. There's a ton of lineup versatility. Uh, I think we're going to be able to play even faster. I think we can get way more aggressive defensively. I think we can continue to grow as a rebounding team. Um, and certainly, like, the, just the, the different offensive options that we're going to have, it's exciting. Um, I, I say all that because the hard part's to get it. The hard part, it feels like, in the spring is to get it together. But really, like, that's one step of about ten steps, right? I mean, the, the real work starts now. Uh, but you, you do got to try to get to this point and feel like you have a, a really competitive roster with not just talent but the right kind of guys that fit, you know, our values, that fit our culture, that fit our style of play. I, I do think we've done that with this roster. Again, that's just step one. Like, there's no reason to celebrate. Um, but to this point, I'm, I'm proud of what's been created. And a lot of people, most notably our returning players uh, and our staff, deserve the credit for that. On the topic of retention, it's less and less in college sports, especially college basketball right now. Why is your staff so successful at getting players to come back, especially key players in a program that hasn't made the NCAA tournament in the last few years? Yeah, well, I think, you know, first off, it, certainly we wish we played in the tournament, but I think the guys that have been here can see the improvement and feel the improvement of the program. They feel like they're a part of that um, and feel like there's a lot of unfinished business there. Uh, but, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't pinpoint like one or two things that, that are the 100% reason other than I think we believe in the people that we're working with every day. Like we, I think I, I have a lot of belief and faith in my assistant coaches and our staff. I have a lot of belief and faith in the guys in that locker room. And when you get guys that, you think are, again, have shared values, care a ton about this program and this place and want to be successful, I think you put yourself in a position to keep it together a little bit more. And that's obviously been very important to us going into this year. Also on the topic of kids coming back and commitments in general, it's been a thing now for a few years on social media, kids posting where they're going. They want to break their own news, what school I'm going to. This is one of the first off scenes I'm, I'm really noticing kids saying, I'm coming back and they're making these big posts of, I'm coming back to Cincinnati or whatever program. As a general thought around college basketball, what are your thoughts on kids making it a big deal that they are returning and making announcements about that? Well, I think, you know, like, it's just, you look at the culture of sports, and it's, I mean, it's really society, right? Um, that this, all this instantaneous attention people get for changing Right for like, there's so much attention in the transfer portal, and who gets the, the highest ranked transfer recruits, and who has the best transfer class, and and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I I think what we've said as a staff is let's celebrate the guys that return. Like let's you don't want the guys that returning to feel like they're not being valued and appreciated uh, because they haven't transferred and they're not out there doing their thing in the recruiting process in the portal. So. You know, I think you see that across college basketball, but I think in our program, and I hope our fans will continue to do this for us, like let's let's really celebrate the guys that stick with us, not just the new guys that show up. Certainly we'll get excited, you know, look with these, these transfers we have are all big transfers. And let's shower them with love, but uh, let's let's really celebrate the guys that return. And I think some, some of the posts that were made from a social media perspective I think are just an example of that. But uh, this is a community that that cares deeply about our program. But I think it's a community that that, that has a lot of pride uh, and I think respects guys that are loyal 
and so well, you know I think as a program we got to really celebrate these guys that have all these options and continue to stick with us uh, and I, I think our fans will do that. You referred to Dylan as the last piece. Is the roster set? Yeah, and, and, unless you know they want to give us more scholarships and <laughs> that type of thing. But no, we have a, a really nice roster now. Again, st step one was putting it together, and that doesn't mean we've accomplished anything yet. But it gives us a chance to get to work. With the influx of talent, I felt like with each addition, your team just got better and better. Um, do you feel a sense of pressure knowing how talented your team is supposed to be on paper at least going into next season? No, I mean, not external pressure, no. I mean, I, I think there's always – I think our players would say this and our coaching staff that we, we all put a, a good, healthy pressure to reach the standards we have. And I think our fans out there uh, and the people that support our program should feel confident to know that, that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves every day to perform, whether it's coaching, whether it's our players playing and improving. Um, and that's going to be there regardless of what what the media thinks of the roster and that type of thing. So, no, I, I think, again, I said it, and I'll continue to say it over and over. It'll probably be boring. But it, it was important to put together a roster we felt really good about. I think we've accomplished that, but that's just step one of a ton of steps to become a really good basketball team. And some of the most fun, or the most fun part of this process is starts Monday when we start our summer program. And and we, we got to have a great summer. We're not going to just show up and be a great team because we, we have a roster that looks good on paper. We got to show up and do the things every single day starting on Monday to try to build this into a great team. But I, I do think there's a foundation there to do that. You bring in Dylan Mitchell, he's a five star and a nice visit and all, but then you got to wait. Is it like sweating out a, a prom date or something? How was that for you? <laughs> Scott, I never had to sweat out a prom date. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Some of us did. Uh, no, just joking. Um, no, I, I think that's just recruiting. You know, you. You know, I, I think we're very passionate about the things we do here. We're certainly passionate about recruiting, and when we identify somebody, like I think everybody can go out and now watch Synergy or game tape or go out and watch live games and go, he's really good. Like, I, he's really talented. But I think the hard part of evaluating is finding the guys that are really gifted but also really fit you um, in a, a – a number of ways, not just in basketball. And when, when you when you kind of identify who those guys are, and then you get them to campus, and you have great visits, it is a like a nervous waiting game. You know, as I get older, I, I get a little bit better at it. But no, you don't sleep as well those nights because you're you know you're anticipating decisions, and and you know how big those decisions can be for your program. But that's that's recruiting. And it's always been recruiting in that way. It's the same way in the fall when we have official visits. It's the same way in the transfer portal in the spring. It's been that way. That Recruiting in some ways hasn't changed, even though it's changed in a lot of other ways. But, yeah, sweating out those decisions, that's that's what all coaches go through. How about the misses? Uh, you, you brought some top-notch dudes in here that you didn't get. But you're never going to get them if they don't even come here. You, you, you've had some outstanding guys visit here. And then out of that, you, you picked up some, some pretty outstanding guys. Yeah, I mean, I think we're always going to – I mean, we, we, we've, we've said this since we got here. I mean, we see this as one of the great programs in college basketball. Um, the best players should want to play here. And we're going to continue to go after the guys that we think are the best players that fit the things that we value and the things that this – this city and this community and this university value, and we're not we're not afraid to we're not afraid to fail in recruiting. Uh, but but what I'm more proud of, Scott, is that we've got a number of really good players to say yes, and then continue to say yes when they have these options to now leave year after year. So I think that that's something I'm proud of for sure. You talked about the recruiting aspect, obviously bringing a guy like Arrington Page, who you guys are all very familiar during. Uh, the recruiting process from high school. Just talk about what he brings to the table as well a little bit. Yeah, uh, so excited about AP. Um, yeah, I think that's like a great example of why 
like all the grassroots recruiting, even if you're not going to recruit high school players, and which we are, uh, but even if you're not, the grassroots recruiting is still so important. Because um, if if we hadn't recruited AP, you know, for a year and some change in high school and seen him play, you know, on two different teams, we saw him play his junior and senior year. It, we actually sophomore, junior, and senior year at Wheeler. We saw him play two different summers in AAU. I mean, you know, we we like I always say this when we talk about AP. I saw AP work out at five thirty in the morning, you know, going into his senior year. Like, and you could see his progression from a guy that wasn't even being recruited to a top fifty player in his class. Like, it was really neat to watch him improve throughout his high school career. And I was as sure about him in the high school recruiting process as anybody I've ever recruited. So when he goes in the transfer portal at Southern Cal, I don't care what his numbers were as a freshman. Like, I don't – I really don't. Like, I've, I've already evaluated him. I know how hard it can be to be a freshman in college basketball. And so, I, like, if it was a kid that we hadn't recruited and been through that process with, we didn't know his family and didn't have a good relationship with him, you know, maybe all you get to do is see what he did at Southern Cal and try to make a decision off of that. But with AP, it was so much deeper. And then you come to find out he had mono his freshman year. I mean, you know, like that. Like there's things like that that you learn, um, and it, it makes a lot of sense. I think he has a chance to make one of the bigger freshman to sophomore jumps in college basketball because he's he's super gifted and a great kid and a great work ethic. CJ Frederick was only available for 15 games last season. Day Day obviously was lost at the end of the NIT. Just wondering if you have an update on their status heading into summer workouts. Yeah, I mean, that's why depth is so important on a roster, right? Like, you, you got to have good, healthy depth. And I think, again, on paper, we have that. But uh, CJ, CJ's had a pretty good spring, guys. He's He's been consistent. Um, he's kind of built up week after week over the last five or six weeks pretty consistently. He's fully cleared and I think ready to go Monday. Um, I was at a, I was at Day Day's doctor's appointment, his his last checkup. Uh, gosh, days are running probably two and a half, three weeks ago uh, down in Charlotte with the guy that did his surgery down there. And um, doctor looked at it, felt great about the way the screw looked and I think his progression is exactly on on pace I think Day Day probably feels like he's cleared and 100% good if he was given the go ahead because you, he feels 100% fine but I think just being cautious and making sure that we do everything we're supposed to do I think he'll be working out but maybe a little bit limited the first two weeks and I expect by middle to end of June him to be completely cleared but I think that's more precaution than anything I think he feels pretty good if I'm not um, overshooting this this um, spring and summer you don't have to worry about waivers um, how does that feel for you because you know last year that was a big thing and this year seems like it's pretty cut and dry how is that how is that for the players and, and the staff yeah there was a I thought the some of the things that we, we had to deal with you know, when you specifically the two waivers last year, you know, just added a, a hurdle to our preparation going into the season. And even as the season started, then the eligibility creates another hurdle to make it all come together. Uh, certainly that's a hurdle that's not there right now and is, is a bit of a relief. Coach Dan mentioned on a uh, baseball broadcast that this would be his last year at Cincinnati. That's the plan. Uh, what are some of the off-season progressions that he needs to make to make that jump to the next level? Yeah, and I think, I think, like you got to put statements like that in context a little bit. I think what he's saying is he wants to, you know, become a a player that the NBA chooses to draft, and that should be his goal. You know, that's how he should be thinking. And I think the, the, the challenge now for Dan is to make sure that that his goals, you know, are matched by what his day-to-day -day habits are. And I'm, I'm really excited for Monday because he needs, you know, for him, it's realistic. He should be thinking about being an NBA player. I think it's he's capable of it. I think it's in there. Uh, but he's got to have a, a work ethic and approach that's 
second to none, and it's been good over the course of his career, and we need it to be great, and Dan needs it to be great, so it'll be fun to get to work with him on Monday. Uh, just, just to clarify on that, you talked about Dan. That, that's his mindset. Has he come to you and told you that this is going to be his last year at UC, or is it more just a determination thing that he's... I think he's just sharing his goals and his mindset, right? Um, certainly, I mean, Dan and I talk very openly, and I, I, I told him, like, his goal should be to have an uh, unbelievable year that results in a ton of winning. I would say with all these guys, like we gotta we gotta win at the highest level, and you know that's that's step one. You know, and if I think individual success and individual improvement only increase winning if you have the right mentality attached to it, and I think we have guys with the right mentality, but. I think Dan's got to spend this offseason among a bunch of our other guys obsessed with improvement and obsessed with, with trying to help our program get to a much higher level in terms of, of, of results and success. And I think if, if he maximizes what he's capable of, it's very realistic to think about him being a draft pick next year. I, I don't think that's crazy. I think that's the kind of goal that a young man like him should have. Anything else from this group? Coach, uh, before we let you go, hosting the TBT in July, uh, you've gotten to know those guys really well. Uh, made a nice run last year. What does it mean to have them back in fifth third playing in front of fans? Yeah, listen, uh, I've said this from the day that I got here, the, the history of our program and the former players and all the, all the people associated with it really matter. You know, we're going to celebrate that and welcome them and recognize them and We've tried to do that over the last couple of years. We'll continue to try to do that at an even higher level moving forward. Um, but having those guys back, you know, I, I don't know what the if it's official because of whatever the copyright laws are and stuff, but they represent Cincinnati basketball, right? Um, so, like, they're back representing Cincinnati basketball, doing it together. It, it, you can, it's really neat because we get them back around our program. We get to know them in a different way. Um, but it's also neat to watch them come back and hang out together. Like that's that's what that's what sports is all about. It's like well, why I still have great relationships with the, the guys I played with and my teammates. You know, when they get back together in this gym, and we 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 try to get them to play against our guys a little bit and kick kick our guys' butt and uh, the stuff like that's fun. Kind of bringing different eras together, and those guys are an era that can still play. And a lot of them still playing at a high level professionally, so that's pretty neat too. Anything else? All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks,